Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Shadow and Sun Show, and welcome back to another top secret review. This time, I'm going to do give you a two for one uh, to make up for the weird video quality I'm experiencing right now. Um, I, as I've been telling you guys, I've been using uh, PDFs to look at uh, some of the old traveler, excuse me, top secret um, modules from back in the day. Uh, because, uh, for example, this one again, it's also sealed. God, that glare is just terrible. But I, I think it's because it's it's so late in the evening that I'm, I'm getting this weird sort of thing. But um, I, I reviewed, the, I read through this one, and I also read through the Top Secret Companion, which I'm going to go over first. Uh, I, I really actually wish that it would have been an easier uh, supplement to, to pick up back in the day. I didn't even know it existed until decades later. But it had a whole bunch of interesting uh, rule additions and pieces of equipment. And it even had a really interesting module at the back of it involving uh, the Concorde and uh, uh, a, whole, a whole bunch of just uh, really helpful information on spycraft, the whole bit. It, it would have made for, uh, to be honest, uh, it, it, it should have really been included in the original rule book, um, maybe even a second edition prior to uh, SI, but SI came out so quickly afterwards that I, I guess it was, you know, uh, just not possible for, for the for the time frame and all that. But um, if, if you are going to play first edition Top Secret, I highly recommend grabbing it. Uh, or at least utilizing the things in it. It has some new stats that it adds to the characters and, and, and a whole bunch of uh, really helpful information. Um, since I can't pull it up right now because I'm using my, my tablet, which it's on to record this video, um, I'd go a little bit more in depth with it. And then Operation Fast Pass. Um, to be honest, this has been my least favorite of the adventures that I've read so far. It was... Uh, uh, another one of those missions where you have to rescue or, or help somebody escape from, uh, where was it? I think, uh, uh, out of, out of the country. Uh, it, he's a, a code breaker, a master of deciphering and writing codes. And, uh, the whole, the whole adventure is based around, uh, ushering him out of, Europe and in back into the states. It's got a whole bunch of maps of, of Eastern Europe and the hotel where the uh, code breaking conference slash convention is taking place. But to be honest, it it, it was really lacking in in adventure uh, other than getting through border security, you know, on multiple occasions and and trying to smuggle this guy out. There there really wasn't the opportunity for uh, anything other than maybe some car chases, which, you know, could have been interesting, could have been fun, but the the rules for such things were just just not, not all that dynamic for, for my tastes, kind of clunky, and it just, it, it really wasn't my cup of tea. It was very much a railroad where certain events had to take place at certain pre-designated times, and they were rather repetitive. You know, uh, passing messages and being at the right place at the right time, and very little a opportunity for combat, whether it be hand to hand or you know, uh, ranged combat shooting, things like that. It was just, it was very much a, a product of its times. It, it would have made for an interesting episode of The Man from Uncle or something like that, uh, but it just really needed some more action for it to be, you know, one of my favorites. Like I said, so far this one is my least favorite. You'd think with the cover, it, it looks kind of interesting, you know. It's got all the, the, the typical spycraft elements, you know, the the mysterious, you know, uh, female agent, uh, guy sporting a Mauser, you know, gotta love that. Uh, a little implication of the car chase, some card games, things like that. But um, I think they go... Or we're planning on going more into the gambling aspect later on down the road. Uh, I know they definitely delved into it a lot with the uh, 
SI game with the whole box set based around a casino. And I know that the Ace of Clubs was probably still on the presses, still working it through, so they decided to leave the whole Casino Royale kind of thing for a later time. But, you know, uh, if, if you're going to play all of the modules, uh, just leave this one uh, in between two more action-packed adventures. That way you, you can get as much bang for your buck as possible. Top Secret, the original version, is still a viable game, but mind you, probably for much older players than even myself, who are more familiar with the politics and goings on of the, the, the 60s, 70s, and 80s. At that time, I was still in my teen, 21 years, you know, uh, up to that point, you know, college, and, and I just wasn't p paying enough attention to politics and having to do the history and, and catching up to, to make Top Secret a viable game in the, the 60s through the 80s. Just, uh, I just don't see it really working out for most players, hence the the you know low turnout for these videos but I, I still think Top Secret can can be a viable game and if not Top Secret I'm also going to be looking into uh, some other espionage games to compare them uh, and contrast them over the course of the next month or three until we get to April when I'll be shifting gears and going into uh, some other topics you know April is my birthday and I, I tend to take that month and go through the things that I really, really enjoy the most, John Carter, Westerns, things like that. But for the foreseeable future, my short videos will still continue uh, to cover Top Secret, this version, SI, and I will be reviewing the new third edition Top Secret. Uh, again, I believe Merle Rasmussen was behind all three of them, which you know should have been the case, at least in my opinion. He did such a great job with the first one and the second one. I hope you guys are looking forward to them as much as I am. But again, if you're a collector, definitely pick up the companion. Definitely pick up a copy of this. Uh, I'm not going to be opening this one uh, thanks to the PDFs, which have been a real boon for my delve into this because I have a lot more items that are still shrink wrapped and I don't really want to open them if I don't actually plan on running those games anytime in the near future. But I do plan on running a top secret game or, or an espionage game of some sort this year. Uh, probably the uh, more pulp style, maybe even using the Agent 13 uh, supplement to, to get uh, my uh, Nazi dinosaur cults of Antarctica off the ground and into the wild blue yonder, as they say. But that's all I got for you tonight. I have a game starting. Uh, actually, I'm probably running late for it. But I wanted to get this out, uh, and since I wasn't so thrilled with this module, I uh, thought I'd pack it in with the two of them. But, you know, uh, if you guys enjoyed this one, let me know. If you had the companion, let me know what you thought of it. Did you use it? Was it just a bunch of, uh, you know, mixed articles from Dragon Magazine that you could, you know, do without, just stuck to the main rule book? Let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it in the comments section below. And that's all I got for you tonight. So have a great weekend. Get some gaming in. I will see you guys tomorrow night on the Sci-Fi Shadow Chat. Hopefully without too many trolls uh, bugging us like, like last Thursday. But until next time, folks, happy trails.